Hello, and welcome to Classroom Close-Up New Jersey, your lens on innovative education in our public schools. I'm your host, Barbara Kishishian. Even before the dawn of the 21st century, you may have heard the phrase digital divide, which separates the people who have access to computers and high-speed online services from those who do not. As schools across New Jersey continue to bridge the digital divide, they're discovering a valuable learning resource offered by our very own statewide broadcast network. NJN's digital classroom is linking students, teachers, parents, and communities to a wide range of interactive learning. NJN's digital classroom is actually a composite of video libraries. And what this provides us, at least in the social studies department, is the raw material that we can use for students to access information in a different format. The reason that Chatham High School looked into digital classroom is because we're very much concerned about taking this generation of students and preparing them for the world that they'll live in rather than the world that we grew up in, because those are two essentially different places. These students are more visual learners, they are bombarded with media all the time, and one of the things that we have to teach them is develop a, an information literacy. We have to help them be able to discern what information applies to their situation, how to manipulate it, how to determine if it's valid. They have to process more information as opposed to just remembering information. <laughs> For us at Chatham High School, we're looking towards authentic assessment and performance-based projects in which students are applying the knowledge that they're learning rather than just memorizing it and providing it back through a standard traditional pen and paper test. In AP European History, we are currently at the point of the year where we're looking at the Renaissance and Reformation. And we're using Moodle in order to create a glossary. It has a module in it that allows students to create an online dictionary of terms. So the entire class has sort of an encyclopedia that they built themselves. What they're going to do today is look through the digital classroom library and find sections of those videos that apply to the entries that they made. I had to do these four and then um, you're supposed to look up on here um, a video that includes the words that you looked up. And edit that entry so it has five, ten, maybe thirty seconds worth of videotape that apply directly to their definition and they're going to add that into the glossary. I'm doing a video on uh, John Huss who is a bohemian preacher who uh, was burned at the stake at the Council of Constance so this particular uh, video has a clip on him. I just save the link into my H drive and then go Windows Movie Maker. So this is the movie that I uh, just got from the website and it breaks it into clips and I know which clips I want and the material I'm looking for is basically in these three. So I just drag them into the, uh, into the movie into one line and that's all I need so I'm going to save it to my computer then I just attach the video, the clips from the movie, into the um, entry. And then anybody who goes into the glossary will see John S2. And then the video is right here. If found guilty, burned at the stake for heresy. So what we'll end up with is a full encyclopedia for Unit 1 made by the students in the class that will include not only text definitions of the significant identifications, but video to go along with each of them. It's a 21 minute video. NGN's digital classroom could be a really good resource just based on my impression of it. For me personally and a lot of people I know, it is really nice to have a video or an image of something you can make the connection between what you've read and digital imagery. It just allows me, like, it just gives me so much more resources to get the information that I need to do my assignment. We've been able, in a way, to extend the school day by having students communicating with each other and communicating with teachers and working on their material, on their coursework, in a more collaborative environment. Where it goes in the future is very hard to determine. We only know that the tools that we're using will be much faster, will be much more efficient, 
and we'll have much more content available to us. The question is, how can we find ways to use those tools to their best benefit? Digital Classroom connects a world of learning directly to students. In addition to the video library, there are other resources and services available. You can find out more by going online and visiting njn.net. Now it's time to step outside the classroom. Join us as we dive right into marine education. If you ever pick up a horseshoe crab, you can simply pick them up by the side of their shell so that you don't hurt them. We're here at Island Beach State Park at the Clean Ocean Action Student Summit. It's a day filled with field trips and workshops. And the biggest thing that I find that the students get out of this is that they're able to connect classroom learning to real world, real life. Holly Tunick and her sixth grade class from Seaside Park Elementary were part of this annual event in which over 400 students from South Jersey spent a very memorable and educational day at the beach. All right, we have on our blue sheets list of critters for the mollusks and crustaceans, ocean beach hunt. Hey Pete, let's go look for a moon snail. Okay. My favorite part of today was going on the scavenger hunt on the beach. It was a lot of fun because a lot of the shells, instead of looking for all the ones that were on the list, I also found some other ones for myself. On the scavenger hunt, we had to find sh different shells and um, we had to find sometimes sea creatures. Like They were seeing if we could find some sand crabs or we were looking for all different types of shells. This is an exoskeleton of a crab that we just found. This student summit, sponsored by Clean Ocean Action, 